uh, we have in our in our pocket uh, what we call the Internet of Knowledge. Everything that we can do today, it's it's amazing if we think of on our grandparents uh, just trying to get information and, and learning uh, for you know the history of the humankind. We have all the information we we want. In, in our pockets, so that that's amazing. And what Bitcoin and blockchain brought to us is what we think is it's a really great way on a new era of the internet. That it's the internet of value. Now instead of asking a centralized uh, organization to hey take this amount of my account and put it on somebody else's account. We are sending for the first time in the history value over internet. So that that's our 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 vision and our uh, we see the the context of the industry. And um, this came in a really particular moment of time. I, I love to share this graphic, and I've been in the British Museum. Um, how I, I will share with some of you some some pictures of the on the coin uh, area that is really amazing is sponsored by city the city bank so <laughs> it's incredible this is how uh, the dollar value lost value uh, in in the last hundred years um well the the biggest or, or the, the that peak that you see there is when when Roosevelt took away all the gold from the American families so it, it lost around 95% of its value in the last 100 years. So if you think on storing value on, on the most powerful currency that we have, it's not good enough. So, and I have another chart just to give you a, a little bit about context on how we came here. The red area of this graphic is showing the amount of dollars in circulation. And the peak that you see in the, in the green area is the exact moment of the 2008 crisis. So instead of saying, hey, this system is not working anymore, uh, we can solve it just printing some more dollars to save the banks and continue rolling the, the business. So, and of course, the, the gold price is, is as well shown in the graphic, how the gold price also is, is following the amount of dollars that are in circulation the, so the, they are super correlated and if I put the Bitcoin price there uh, the, the, the graph will not fit the projector so <laughs> so given that context we saw Bitcoin as the most powerful network for storing value over time is the most secure network we've been running for the last nine years and um, every hacker and every you know crypto fan was trying to hack and, and break this uh, this network, and they couldn't do that. So nine years from now, from from that moment, it's it's enough time to for us to say that is the most secure network in the in the planet. So on top of Bitcoin, we build our scale. Many of you maybe know, RSK is giving Bitcoin the capabilities to run smart contracts that are fully compatible with Ethereum um, with low transaction cost. So if you have a solution that is running on Ethereum, any kind of solution, and you are developing software uh, on top of Ethereum blockchain, every tool, every uh, part of the ecosystem, and the code as well, it's, it's compatible with our scale. So I will stop the presentation here and show you how we solve this technically instead of going through the presentation. So we have we have Bitcoin blockchain here. Can you see from, from back there? Okay. We have Bitcoin blockchain that is mined by a lot of miners some of them are connected to some mining pools and they secure the network. How this works? The miners are connected, some of them, to a mining pool. They are solving calculation. The mining pool is dividing among all the miners that are connected to the mining pool. The solution 
uh, that they need to solve for looking for a new for mining a new block and every 30 seconds the miners send some slow difficulty calculation to the mining pool server for them to show that they are connected and how many hashing power they are providing to the pool in order to when the block is mined for that pool the mining pool server will distribute the rewards among all the miners that are connected to the pool on you know um, distributed on um, how much hashing power they are providing yeah so this is a calculation that is doing you know uh, it's a low difficulty calculation that goes to the, to the garbage. Yeah. So we build RSK sidechain. RSK. The difference between Bitcoin and, and RSK is Bitcoin has blocks every 10 minutes. RSK has every 15 seconds. The difficulty to have blocks every 15 seconds is much lower than the Bitcoin one. So we need. Uh, less calculation uh, hashing power to mine RSK and we connect Bitcoin and RSK with a piece of software that is called two-way peg this two-way peg is the one that is responsible for connecting these two networks yes this this uh, these two chains yeah so how you run a smart contracts in RSK on top of Bitcoin, it's because you are paying for transaction fees for executing these smart contracts with Bitcoin. But because we are a sidechain, we need a different coin or name. We are not issuing a coin. So you send your Bitcoins, Satoshis or Mini Bitcoin, to a lock-in account in this two-way pair the same amount is released in the RSK sidechain, but we call this a smart Bitcoin because you can run smart contracts. Yeah. So with this uh, with this value that is in the Bitcoin side hold by by the two way pair, you can run your smart contracts and uh, operate on the RSK sidechain. Is that clear for now? Yeah. Cool. Who is mining RSK? Well, I told you that this mining proof goes to the, to the trash. Well, not anymore. We are giving the miners a new revenue stream for them to start running smart contracts on this um, mining proof. So instead of putting this mining proof in the trash bin, we are using that calculation for running and securing RSK smart contract network. So we are connecting these guys here. Around 80 to 85% of the of the Bitcoin miners that are mining now the, the Bitcoin blockchain are uh, in conversation with us to install the plugin and start mining RSK. In this moment, if, if you enter stats.rsk.co, you can see that we have more hashing power than Ethereum, only with 15% of the Bitcoin hashing power. We launched the mainnet, so we are live. You can start using the network in, in this exact moment. So who is securing this two-way pair? Re remind that, do you remind that you send Bitcoins to this two-way pair? So who is holding the value? Who is securing this? We have uh, and I will go back to the to the presentation to to give more context. So I, I told you that we are Ethereum compatible. We started as a fork of the Ethereum built on machine. So your Solidity contract can can run on, on RSK. This is the Bitcoin bridge. Uh, we have and always will have this this bridge to with a one to one conversion rate with Bitcoin just to convert the Bitcoin to smart Bitcoin and allow the, the, the execution of the smart contract in our scale. And we present this Bitcoin improvement proposal that will allow you we will allow us to become a dry chain. A dry chain uh, will not need 
a federation holding the value in this two-way pair, a centralized, let's call it centralized federation, the miners will be the ones that are voting for, for the transactions that are happening in the Bitcoin side. Because we cannot control Bitcoin, we can just lock the value in, in, in the implementation that is happening now. But with this BIP, we can have this hybrid solution between securing the value with the miners as well as with the federation. And I will talk a little bit about the federation now. I talk about merge mining. If you are technical, I can show you how, how this works, but I think it was clear. And the global federation I want to mention. is composed by 25 of the most important companies in the ecosystem, uh, you know, um, exchanges, um, so every huge company in the ecosystem that is holding billions of dollars in, in crypto assets are securing this two-way pair. So they are, not, they are not going to compromise their reputation just for few satoshis need to, to run smart contracts on our scale. So that, that's why every, every piece of the solution, it's reward somehow to, to not, you know, uh, trying to take our scale down, yeah? So we have the Bitcoin miners happy because we are giving them a new revenue stream we have great and happy developers having an alternative to Ethereum with a low transaction cost attached to fiat. That is a great uh, thing to, to mention. And of course, we have this federation that is, uh, that is a key part of the, of the solution, happy because they are going to get a, a few amount of the, of the transaction fees. Um, the five pillars that we love to mention is the community. We are building these solutions and, and probes for the communities that are already there. We are not building a new community. The community is, is there, it's not, it's, it's not a centralized, uh, an RSK community. We are giving new, new tools, alternatives, and we build some programs. The first one is the education. We build two courses that are given for free to students, universities, coding schools, for, for them to start, with, to start training themselves and, and making new courses uh, on blockchain, Bitcoin, smart contracts, Solidity, RSK, all the technology stack is there. there. Are two courses, one oriented to technicals and the other one for executives or decision makers. Uh, the other one is the partner network. We are just infrastructure. We need software uh, factories, developers, and companies that want to start uh, developing solutions on top of the network. So we build this partner network to start uh, giving them, uh, you know, op business opportunities to be run on top of the network. The third one is if you are a hardcore developer, you can get rewards for finding bugs in our scape. This is our uh, bug bounty program. And we are running an ambassador and beta tester program. If you are an enthusiast on the technology, uh, we are giving you education and, and some other tools to start uh, you know, growing the ecosystem in, the, in their own local communities. Uh, because we cannot own a community, we are just facilitating this for free to, to everybody that wants to join. Well, everything we do is open source on our GitHub account. If you want to chat with our core developers, there is a Gitter channel. And I build some, some material that is hard, hardcore, for hardcore developers. That are the technical resources if you want to start looking for, for the technology. And something to mention, we are uh, providing some tutorials on how to, to start developing these uh, smart contract solutions. We had a lot of presentation and a lot of people that are super enthusiastic about the technology, but we are looking for developers. If you are a developer or want to start developing uh, your own solutions or just as a curiosity, we, we build this uh, small tutorial for you to deploy your first smart contract without knowing anything about 
programming. So you can just go and enter. What I'm showing in this video is we have the the testnet and the mainnet. We have a faucet to get smart bitcoins for free, of course, in the testnet. If I'm giving you uh, smart bitcoins on the mainnet, I'm giving you bitcoin, and I'll be uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> so, uh, um, we have a lot of tools uh, that are connected, as I mentioned before, uh, to, to RSK as well as to, to Ethereum. So, I will not bother you with this uh, demonstration. And I have two use cases to, sh to, to show you. One is this procurement transparency solution. Uh, do you know about uh, public and private tenders? Yeah. How this works? Yeah. Well, in, I'm coming from Argentina, I'm living in Barcelona, but I'm coming from a third world country where corruption is everywhere. It's super easy for, for a public tender to be cheap in, in Argentina and, and several countries in this way. You present your proposals, and the day you present the proposal, the government official, uh, you, you know, you have be between the, the presentation and the opening uh, a period of time. So in that period of time, if I'm the politician that is in charge of the tender, I can open the envelopes, see what's the other offer, and tell my brother, who is also owning a construction company, hey, just put these numbers because with these numbers you will win the tender. And then, in the opening day, they open the envelopes, and who is the winner? Mm. The brother of the, <laughs> of the government official. So this is super simple. You upload the tenders to this system. You get a hash that is uh, on the public blockchain, and the, at the moment of the opening, you check uh, the hash again, and you see if somebody changed the proposal. Super easy. But this is building value on top of the blockchain. So, And this is Da Vivienda. Da Vivienda is the second largest bank of Colombia, and we build this solution in three steps. And I want to give you this as an example of how to leverage and, and deploy this kind of complex solution in what we think, or a lo lot of people think, is the evil, the banks. The banks are not evil and not, are not going to close. We are helping them on, on leveraging on this great technology. The first stage is an employee loyalty program. It's a wallet with a coin that is issued by the bank just for the employees that are paying in the office cafeteria for lunch. The, the Vivienda is a super good employer. They give lunch for free, and now they have this e-wallet for, for the payment. With this first stage, they don't have commercial risk, and, regula and they don't have regulatory risk because it's a kind of controlled environment. But they are dealing with public and um, private keys and how to handle uh, a node connected to a, to a public blockchain. So every piece of software that is needed to run this application is uh, provided and is, and is uh, developed and deployed by the IT team in DaVivienda. The second stage is going to the customers, but without regulatory risk, just a customer reward program. Every time the customer swipes the card, they get points, that points can be uh, changed or, or used or redeemed, uh, I don't know, for a flight ticket, a spa, a massage, or whatever they, they provide. And the third stage, that's the main goal, it's going to the Central Bank of Colombia that we are having conversations as well, and saying, hey, this is working, this is blockchain, and it's not hurting anybody. Why don't we start offering micro lending solutions or uh, financial solutions for low cost for the people that are on bank? So this thing we are doing with the Vivienda and with Tarjeta Naranja as well in the same three stage uh, way. Tarjeta Naranja is the f is the first is the largest uh, card issuer non non bank card issuer in Argentina. Uh, so. 
it's a great way to start, you know, deploying solutions on, on big institutions uh, without risk. These are some other potential use cases. We are uh, working with uh, the Moscow government. We've been talking with the House of Lords here in, in London uh, for, for some crypto projects around energy. Um, well, there are a lot of things happening everywhere. Uh, this is just for you to, to have maybe a spark uh, and start your, your own business and, and ideas. So these are, these are our communication channels. Everyone claiming to be RSK asking for Ether or Bitcoin is a scam. Don't send any value to any address. Yeah? Thank you for that. <laughs> if you have any question, you have my email. I'm the admin of the Telegram group. You can look for my, my alias and, and ask me. Don't send anything. We are not on a token sale. Yeah? I, I've been in Asia and people just approach me asking me, hey, I, I send you money. And I say, no, uh, sorry, you've been uh, cheat. Uh, you've been scammed. Sorry. So the only website is rsk.co. Just enter there. All the information that I provide is, is on, the, on the website. So with all this, I want to thank you all for coming on a Monday. Uh, hopefully it's not raining anymore. <laughs> so thank you very much and um, enjoy the bar. <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you have any questions. Are you doing a token sale? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, I pinned a message on Telegram saying, hey, there is no ICO, blah, blah. What was the first question after the pin message? Is there an ICO? <laughs> so, sorry, but no. What about the five pillars? Yeah, I can go back. So can you explain a bit more on what constitutes security on uh, RSK uh, side chains? Or what's what are the main components which ensure the security? So with a shorter block time and, and all that. So then, mm -hmm. how do you make sure there is no uh, uh, you know the standard attacks and all that? 